Helen Get out of the car and just look at these eagles Helen Helen Get out of the car and just look, just look at them eagles That's your country's bird. <laughs> In some ways, the drive from Ohio to Florida was the most magical part of the trip. Sort of dreamy vignettes. Us like a cold gray ribbon being pulled into the Appalachian foothill. Then later, as like a mercury trickle in the Georgia mountains behind us. Sort of country western radio backdrop to my dad's constant tour of the world. She's an astronaut. <laughs> I do remember very clearly, though, getting to Disney World. I was five years old. I hopped out of the car, my little rat tail bounced. <laughs> and I started running for the gate. And the smell of rotten ketchup hit me. You know, like, you don't forget that smell. It's like if tomatoes didn't wear socks. <laughs> and the first day was great. I mean, it was, it was Disney World. It was good. I was five years old. We, were, we rode the teacups. I didn't see Mickey. And I wanted, that's all I wanted. I wanted to see Mickey. That's why I was there. I, I kind of thought, you know, that we would see each other and I would have a shirt of him and he would have a shirt of me and we'd go. <laughs> Second day, it's a small world. No Mickey. Third day, no Mickey. I was dejected. I had thoughts mommy wouldn't be in frontier land. He's a mouse. It was on the morning of the fourth and final day. I was in a souvenir stand in Tomorrowland, eyeing a cosmically sized lollipop that seemed to answer a question I hadn't quite asked. <laughs> Staggered out of the candy shop, and I found the sky hot in my eyes. And a plume, a specter forming over the gulf to the west. A specter with two smoke arms holding the empty Florida sky. And a woman nearby mouthed the word challenger. I had no idea what that meant at that point. I looked around, the rides were still turning. Even as one of them came apart in the sky. And instead of eyes, I saw thousands of pairs of that tiny bloom gazing westward, looking at itself. And that's when I saw him. Staring right at me from across the pavement, I froze. The only one not looking west. And 
then, like a distant freight train, slow and steady, he started coming toward me. Two larger versions of that plume bouncing at me across the black top. I remember this part very clearly. He got close. He stopped. He leaned down. Until the plumes slid off his eyes and were replaced by two versions of the lollipop I was holding. And then in a voice that was not his voice. And through a smile that didn't move. He said, are you going to pay for that? <laughs> well, tomorrow the land became a blur. The adults started moving. The rides started turning even faster. The monorail came and went. Days passed, years passed. A decade passed. A hundred years ate everything around us frozen Tomorrowland kids. Left there in the greasy ruins. We steal what we need, we run, we lay low. Still waiting on them flying cars <laughs> under a crackling sky.